know about clearing a certification be it cloud or any other certification for that matter and today in this session we are going to focus basically on the cloud engineer certification so let's get started by looking at the agenda so guys first we will understand what or why is basically gcp used and then talk about the most famous gcp certification which is the cloud engineer certification once we're done with that we'll talk about various job roles that you can uh, basically apply to once you're done with the cloud engineer certification and then finally how to get started so in the cloud engineer certification we are also going to tell you what all topics you should study exactly and uh, how you should study and and what is the kind of exam that you can expect when you want to uh, you know sit for clearing this certification so guys this is the agenda for this session i hope it's clear to you now let's go ahead and start off with the first topic which is why should you actually go ahead and learn gcp so guys gcp is basically powering business which are uh, spread across 190 plus countries so no matter which country you're going to you will always find a google cloud platform job over there second of all gcp is known for its ai kubernetes and big data workloads so any company who is working on ai any company who is working with microservices or any company who is working with big data they and if they are preferring cloud infrastructure they will be using gcp for sure given the fact that uh, gcp provides more mature services in terms of ai in terms of kubernetes in terms of big data than its counterparts that is aws and azure so also a fun fact over here that obviously uh, aws and azure are larger cloud providers with respect to gcp in terms of the revenue that they generate but uh, you know still the services the ai and kubernetes and big data services are better with gcp and the sole reason for that is that gcp is basically owned by google right and google since it's the largest it company in the world and probably every second there are millions of uh, searches which happen on the uh, google search product which they have right so they know better about how infrastructure has to be managed, how microservices have to be managed. And obviously, since they have the best search engine platform, they also are making use of AI and machine learning models. And that is what they're also offering to their customers. So what all tools they used internally earlier, they have now made it available on their cloud platform, right? And that is why you can trust the services the, uh, that Google gives you in terms of uh, you know ai in terms of kubernetes in terms of uh, big data that it's going to be the best and that's what you know customer feedback also says so when people uh, have used aws services for ai or machine learning or when they have used azure services for ai or machine learning or even kubernetes they did not find that kind of efficiency that they get in gcp right and the sole reason uh, you know gcp has lesser revenue than its other counterparts is because gcp was launched i think the most late i think it was launched around 2012 and when you compare it with it uh, with uh, you know its counterparts so aws uh, came in the picture in around 2006 and azure came in the picture in around 2010 right so gcp came in the most late and that's why you know it is taking time for people to adopt gcp but when you talk about companies who are on gcp um, you you can think about the name so you have paypal you have hsbc so all these are companies which are basically hosted on the google cloud platform and if you talk about the kind of nature that they uh, basically deal in the kind of work that they deal in paypal is basically a finance company hsbc is a bank and you can imagine even if one transaction fails for these kind of companies that is PayPal and HSBC, the amount of loss that they will like incur, right? Still, they prefer, uh, you know, companies or uh, like Google uh, or, or infrastructure of Google Cloud for that. And the sole reason for that is they understand that if an infrastructure can handle a product like Google, an infrastructure which can handle a product like YouTube, obviously, you know they can handle the product that they are trying to host which is either paypal or the hsbc mobile uh, net banking app right having said that uh, if you talk about the other companies which are there in google new york times is also hosted on google cloud hsbc is also hosted on google cloud 
and even the Google product. So Google search engine is hosted on Google Cloud and even YouTube is hosted on the Google Cloud, right? So the world's two most used applications, the Google search and the world's most used video streaming platform, which is YouTube, is also hosted on the Google infrastructure. So what more proofs you can get that Google infrastructure can handle anything, right? Talking more about it, now let's talk about the fact that if you want to become a professional who understands the Google Cloud infrastructure in and out, what is or how do you proceed, right? So for any technology guys, in, uh, certifications is something which can basically help you for bagging interviews, right? And similarly, there are certifications from Google Cloud Engine as well. And the most famous certification from Google is the Google Cloud Engineer Associate certification, right? Now, if you talk about this certification, uh, this certification deals with uh, you learning solutions architect skills, you learning administration skills, and there are a lot of other things as well that you will learn in this certification. So, if you can quickly go to the uh, website and see what is the Associate Cloud Engineer certification all about. So basically it tests your ability on all those things. So right, so it will test your ability on how you can manage access and security. It will test your ability to see how you can plan and configure a cloud solution, how well you can deploy and implement a cloud solution, how well you can set up a cloud solution from scratch. So all these are the skills that will be tested once you sit for the exam. And if you want to look at it in more detail, you can just go to this link cloud.google.com slash certification slash cloud engineer. All right. And these, this is basically the exam guide of the associate cloud engineer, right? So you can, uh, one second. So this is the exam guide. So in this, you can see that setting up a cloud solution environment is something that they expect in that they're expecting you to know how to create projects. Projects are basically entities in Google Cloud, then they should know how to assign users to predefined IAM roles, how to manage cloud identities in the Google Cloud platform, how to enable APIs. So remember guys, they don't expect you to create APIs, but there are internal APIs of Google Cloud, which you should know how to enable while you're using their cloud platform, right? Uh, how to use the stack driver service. So if you have to provision the stack driver service, which is a part of Google Cloud Platform, how do you do that, right? You should be good with the billing section of GCP. You should understand how the billing accounts basically work, how, should, how you can basically link uh, multiple projects in a Google Cloud console to uh, the billing account, how you can set budgets, because these are the things that will be expected, uh, you know, from a person who probably will be an expert in this cloud technology once they start working for a company. Right, because company needs need uh, want to know how how well they can, you know, manage their cloud platform probably by, from the on the monetary front or probably on the technical front as well. So that is what you have to manage once you start working as a Google Cloud engineer. Apart from that, you will also be involved in planning uh, the infrastructure for a particular application that they are launching, and for that, these are the skill sets that you should be good at. Right, so primarily these 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 services that is the compute engine, the GKE app engine, Cloud Run, and Cloud Functions is something that you should be well versed with. When you come to databases, you should have a sound knowledge on Cloud SQL, BigQuery, Cloud Spanner, and Cloud Big Data, uh, Big Table. Right, so these are again uh, some services, some database services which are offered by Google Cloud, and mostly the chances are the company that you will be working for they will be using any one of these services. So you should have experience or you should have done some projects on these before you can apply for jobs so that, uh, you know, the hiring manager can assess whether you would be able to do their uh, work or you would be able to understand the requirements that their company's stakeholders will have, All right? Apart from this, you should also be able to deploy solutions. So not only will you be involved in planning, but you will also have to do the administration part, that is the deployment part of, uh, you know, the, the, the things that you're going to plan out and that what you're going to showcase uh, to your stakeholders. So in the, even in the implementation part, you will be involved and you will have to do all these things, uh, you know, while you are uh, working as a Google Cloud engineer.
and uh, you will also have to ensure successful operation which is again uh, an administration perspective of uh, deploying resources and finally you should also be good with access and security services in Google Cloud so if you want an in detail layout of what will be expected in the exam what can be expected in the job interview just go through this exam guide and I think this should set you up right with respect to what all you should learn talking about uh, once you've learned this you also have an option of you know attempting the practice exam that Google Cloud has so once you're done with all your learning you can take a practice exam from Google Cloud and this will basically be a replica of what you might experience while, while you're giving the actual exam and this will also give you you know an assessment as to how prepared are you for giving this exam so my suggestion would be that uh, before even starting learning GCP you should actually go ahead and see what the exam actually expects so that you can set your uh, mindset with respect to how you have to learn things okay talking about how the exam is going to be guys so uh, the, the exam is going to be an MCQ exam so if I can quickly show you how the things are going to be yes so okay so the exam is going to be for $125 plus taxes so this is the exam fee it is available in English Japanese Spanish and Indonesian right the format will be a multi choice like I said multiple choice question and it also might be the fact that uh, there are multiple answers which are correct right and it can be taken remotely or in person at a test center but I think in the, with the pandemic phase currently it will be done remotely for you guys right uh, apart from that there are no prerequisites to uh, go ahead and uh, you know attend this exam and the recommended experience that they have uh, that they uh, basically expect from a customer is uh, six months plus hands-on experience right so what this means is uh, obviously you should learn Google Cloud before attempting this exam right and that's what this recommended experience is so if you take a course or if you learn on your own you should basically be well versed with all the services and uh, this six months is not a hard line uh, uh, you know timeline which they are giving you they're just suggesting you that probably if you have worked for more than six months in a company on Google Cloud probably you know you know about uh, Google Cloud and you can attempt this exam right so this is about the exam that you can attempt guys uh, apart from this now let's talk about once you clear that exam what are the kind of jobs that you might look at so in the US the average salary of a cloud engineer is around hundred and twenty two thousand dollars per annum and in India it's around uh, seven lakh thirty thousand rupees per annum right now this is the average salary obviously it could be it can go higher as well it can go lower as well but when you talk about a general cloud engineer probably be it from Google Cloud be it from AWS be it from Azure this is the kind of salary that they can expect so if this is this is the kind of salary that you feel uh, you know is going to be good for you you can actually go ahead and you know appear for this uh, cloud cloud engineer certification but uh, mind you guys as you grow higher in your career as you go up the ladder learning only GCP will not help you will also have to learn about multiple cloud providers so as starters you can start with GCP but as you move along as you grow you will have to learn more cloud providers okay uh, moving further the other kind of job roles that or what the other kind of job roles that you can search uh, probably on LinkedIn or on any other job profile is uh, related to either a solutions architect or a cloud developer or a cloud administrator a senior cloud architect a cloud DevOps engineer and operational support engineers so all these are different kind of job profiles that are available in the market that you can apply to after doing this certification I think you can go ahead for solutions architect you can apply for cloud administrator you can apply for senior cloud architects if you also learn DevOps which has become kind of uh, the trend these days you can also apply for cloud DevOps engineers roles and then operational support engineer is also something that you can apply for the only thing that you will miss out on if you do not have a developer background if you have a developer background you can apply for the cloud developer role as well but if you don't have a developer background uh, cloud developer role is something that you might have to skip but after doing this certification after studying for this certification all these roles you can apply to if you have a developer background you can also apply for cloud developer roles okay now 
I have just discussed with you the things that you have to know in order to crack, uh, you know, the GCP exam and the kind of profiles as well that you can apply to after getting that exam cleared, right? Now let's talk about how you can start learning for this exam, right? So guys, there are a lot of services in GCP, right? So you will have to practice them. Uh, how can you practice them? Uh, you will have to pick up hands-on projects. Uh, if you're doing it by yourself, you probably have to refer some documentation, implement architectures that are referred in probably white papers or the Google official documentation as well, right? You will have to focus on cloud and networking fundamentals. You will have to focus on uh, the major GCP services which I mentioned in the exam guide and the white papers of uh, Google Cloud Platform. And once you're done with that, I think that should be good to go. The other way you can also learn is you can take professional help because, uh, I mean, in my experience, what I've seen is that sometimes when you get stuck in a particular concept, you lose interest, right? And that is why you have professional courses for your help. So what you can do is you can also learn with a company like Intellipath. And uh, what you can do is you can uh, basically just buy their courses. They will decide what the curriculum is going to be for you because they have uh, thoroughly researched the exam guide and according to that they have prepared the content and they will be delivering it to you accordingly right so not only will you they will help you in clearing the certification but they will also make you job ready because the trainers who are going to teach you this particular uh, uh, exam or this particular course is going to be people who are already google cloud engineers in the industry right so who would be better to teach you as technology uh, uh, by someone who's probably already cleared their technology and is already a working professional. Okay, so talking about uh, ways that you can learn GCP for free, well, guys, we always have uh, our YouTube, uh, you know, channel at your disposal. So you can go through a lot of videos that we have posted on cloud in general as a cat category. We also have uh, something called as uh, Intellipart blog so you can, you can go to intellipart.com slash blogs to read more about cloud to read more about the Google technology and apart from that we also have something called as Intellipart Academy right so what you can do is you can simply go to uh, intellipart.com uh, slash academy and this should basically give you an overview of all the free courses uh, that we offer and in case you are interested uh, you can actually go take up a free course learn from it and if you like the way we teach you can also go ahead and enroll for our premium courses uh, right now we do not have a free course on google cloud but we have some free courses on other technologies so if you're interested you can just go through them if you like our way of teaching then probably you can go ahead and enroll for our premium courses as well. Now these are not uh, full courses guys, these are just a preview of the full course and in case you are interested, you can uh, you know just switch to intellipart.com and on intellipart.com you will find our catalog of courses that we teach and here you have to search for Google Cloud and then you will get the Google Cloud course that we basically teach. Right. So more on this, my colleague would be, uh, you know, explaining you what what happens if you take a course with us. What are the different kind of features that we offer? What are the benefits that you get once you take a course from Intellipart? So over to you. Uh, uh, and then uh, my friend will also be discussing about the course content uh, that we cover in the course. Right. So if you are interested, you can also call in this number. I'd like to take a leave. Right, so these are the numbers they can call on and then over to my colleague who is going to explain you about this course now.